So, <clears throat> not sure if this will be a second video, or uh, maybe, you know, I'll, we'll splice that first video and, and put this onto that, so you have two equal size videos. Uh, we'll see when I get home and uh, work on it uh, whenever I can. So anyway, let's continue with the cancer story. I got a little different look on the trail, so I just thought I'd go ahead and show you show you what it looks like. That's uh, that's why this probably other than uh, Ross Prairie, which we I did that uh, video a couple days back. Uh, that's the only trail that I, I like better than this one that I found so far. Uh, well, Marshall Swamp too, but you know that's just a different different type of trail. Because this trail gives you the same thing, gives you all different looks uh, as you move along. Not the, not as not as nice as uh, Ross Prairie, but it, this it's, it's it's nice. I mean, this is and this is close by. I don't have to drive a gazillion miles to, to get to this trail. And you know, once again, I'm out here. It's just I'm here all by myself. I you know, haven't seen a single person hiking this trail. And you know, now that they've cut it in from Baseline Park to make it easy to get over here, I'm I'm surprised. You know that people are haven't found it and that's good for me I I love being out here all alone it's you know it's kind of awkward when when you gotta you know pass people and you know the virus is still out there to a certain degree so uh anyway back to the the cancer story so the um you know the, the stem cell transplant I didn't go into all the details there uh but it was at Carmanos and boy I tell you if you ever want to if you're gonna try to pick a place and I don't know it may have changed since I've been there but Carmanos was the cat daddy I mean they uh, what they did was and I don't know why all Hall hospitals don't do this was they assigned uh, Anita never forget her she was but she's your coach um, anything that you need uh, any questions that you have uh, any anytime you want to talk to a doctor you you go through your uh, your coach you know or, or whatever they called her your, your representative and that would that made things so doggone convenient and she was fantastic about getting back to you because you know, that's a, that's another thing when you've got cancer you know there's always you know there's that there's the cat scan i can't tell you how many cat scans i've had about uh, i probably 50 and uh you know and and so what they what they would do when i was at um well it was oakwood hospital back then uh but they would uh they call up and uh mr alice can you please call our office uh, you know, we want to talk to you, and you're, th you know, you don't know, you don't know what it, what it is, because it could be, it could be the most terrible, you know, like when you first hear that you've got cancer, you know, it could be the most terrible news on the planet, and so, you know, so, I, so then you call back, and well, I'm sorry, that's nurse so and so, and she has your information, and uh, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to track her down, and uh, and have her call you back. So then they, you know, they'll call back and. Mr. Alice, can you please call our office and uh, we have the information for you. You know, so you're playing phone tag back and forth, and I, you know, I told him, I couldn't tell you how many times I said, you know, if it's good information, you know, just leave a message. Well, Mr. Alice, due to the Privacy Act, we can't leave that information as a message on your phone. What the hell are you talking about? Not only are you still running Windows XP, so all your computers in your office are hacked, you know, that information. I mean. Anything you say on the phone is being recorded by Google. It's being recorded by the NSA. It's being recorded by your ISP. There is no damn privacy. You know, don't tell me about privacy. <laughs> this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Just let me know if it was good, you know. So, you know, then finally you get through to them. Yes, everything looks good, Mr. Ellis, the Premier Cat Scan. With, there's no sign of the uh, cancer that has come back. And, uh, we're happy to tell you, you know, and so you, you know, you, you just beat yourself up for your know, two days trying to trying to just talk to the one person that can, can tell you that on the phone, so that it can be recorded by the whole damn universe. That's just, man, I tell you, this world is so messed up sometimes. But uh, getting back to the Carmanos, so that was why how I got on that tangent was, you know, because with Carmanos having Anita, you know, all I had to do, I knew exactly who to talk to. And she was just fantastic, and and uh, you know, any any questions I had, she if she didn't have the answer, she would get it. So anyway, I'm, I'm sitting there, you know, when I got cancer the second time, and folks, that's that's a much more serious situation. And uh, I remember Doctor, uh, I think it's Uberti, and he comes in and he says, I'm sorry to say, Mr. Ellis, but you know, 
we're going to try a stem cell transplant, he says, but our success numbers with the procedure that we're going to do is, uh, is very low. You know, you're only going to have a chance, about a 20 to 40 percent chance of surviving, you know, this round of cancer. So he says, I hope you can get your affairs in order, uh, you know, in case uh, this doesn't work. He says, because, uh, you know, it, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And then he left. And, uh, and so I was sitting there with Anita. And I, you know, of course, when, when I got cancer the first time, you know, we went to the University of Michigan before I decided to go with Oakwood, is, which was might have been a mistake. And uh, oh, the reason why I went with Oakwood was because they had a clinical trial going, okay? You know, if you're going to go through cancer, you might as well sell your body for science, you know, try to help some other people. And so uh, they, the clinical trial they had at the University of Michigan, it was a 50-50 trial. You had a 50% chance of getting the uh, the new treatment, and 50% chance of of not getting it because they needed that blind study. And I think that's called a blind study. You know, I'm not a medical person other than I've been through it as a patient. And uh, but the Oakwood clinical trial, which didn't work out anyway, the first first time, uh, that was a that was a 100 percenter. You know, you, so because that, that was the that, that was the Avastin, I think that. Uh, that uh, perforated my valves. They were trying to add that into the cocktail to see how it would do, you know, and that was, that's why it was a trial. And uh, it didn't do, do good for me. <laughs> but, but, you know, it might've worked with some other people, you never know. But anyway, so I, I met Carmanos and it just popped into my head. I said, you know, if I'm gonna die, I said, you know, 60% chance or 70% chance that I'm not gonna make it. I said, is there a clinical trial, you know, that I can, I can get in just, you know, so that, they can learn something from me and I uh, and I looked up and she goes well there was she says uh, and I said oh that piece of paper on the wall there she goes yeah she says but I think that's already because uh, you know they only run so many test cases you know they don't they don't continue the trial forever you know and she says I, I'm, I'm not sure if they're, they're still doing that trial or not she says but I'll find out and I said okay cool and so she came back and she says, well, you're, in, you're either in luck or you're out of luck because uh, you're the last person to uh, get into that clinical trial if you want to do it, you know. And I said, hell yeah, I want to do it. <laughs> she goes, well, okay. You know, she says, I'll, I'll do the paperwork and we'll get you into that, that clinical trial. And uh, so what it was, that particular trial was... Uh, it was Dr. Lum. He had come up with a new uh, addition to the, because, uh, you know, they had been doing stem cell transplants for, you know, 15 years. Now, the only thing that had changed over the years was they got better at the cocktail that they give you. And, uh, I mean, it wipes you out. I mean, it's not like that first round of chemotherapy. This one, actually, uh, it, that's why they got to get harvest your stem cells, because it actually stops your immune system completely, it stops your bone marrow from producing stem cells. And if you can't produce stem cells, folks, you're dead. That's it. You know, you got no immune system at all. And you, and after this transplant, you don't have an immune system. But anyway, so continuing on there. Uh, so she, I was the last person to get into the trial. And what the trial was, and, and, and it's just an amazing idea that he came up with. And it, it sounds simple in hindsight. But what they did was they harvested, you know, while they harvested my stem cells, they harvested my white blood cells, okay? Because, you know, when you think about it, you have no immune system when, after the stem cell transplant. And uh, so, and then what, what they did was they took the, uh, the white blood cells, and I'm pretty sure it was rotuxin, and they treated them with rotuxin. And uh, the theory was, is that, you know, the stem cell transplant, that the, the point of it is, is to wipe out all the cancer cells. But that's why, you know, you only have a 40% or 20% chance uh, because more, more than likely those stem cell transplants don't get all the cancer cells. And then it comes back, you know, again, and then your eyes go down even further. So, you know, that's why they, they wanted to improve on that somehow. So the theory was is that they, they would, uh, you know, harvest those white blood cells. And then after the... Uh, uh, the stem cell transplant, you know, uh, maybe just a couple of days after it, or maybe it might have been longer, um, they, they inject the uh, white blood cells, you know, in, back into your body. 
and uh, and so of course that's exactly what in the and with the theory that it was going to mop up any cancer cells that remained uh that the um, stem cell transplant didn't wipe out and uh so i you know okay i mean i'm glad that and by the way the uh, leukemia and lymphoma society they paid for for that whole thing that was twenty six thousand dollars for me to participate in that clinical trial and they paid for all of it so that is a great charity and uh, if you look them up uh, most of the money that you give to them doesn't go to administrative costs it actually goes to helping people and in, in uh, research uh, you know they're very they're very low cost on the administrative side so it's a really well run and excellent charity I, it's one that i give to of course um, i'll never pay them back probably the twenty six thousand, but i give you know i give to to them so all right, so getting back to the story, uh, so I'm, I'm up there and, uh, you know, man, I tell you what, uh, imagine the worst case of the flu that you've ever had in your lifetime, okay? That was me on that bed. I mean, I could, and the chills, you know, I'm laying there just shaking away, you know, and sweating and the cold chills, uh, you know, your teeth are going... And you just like, you know, and so the doctors came in, you know, they come into the room and I'm thinking something's wrong, right? You know, because I mean, why am I having this, this major reaction to, you know, them giving me back the white blood cells? And now, now the doctors go, oh, isn't this fantastic? Look how sick he is. Oh my gosh, this is wonderful. This is absolutely wonderful, Mr. Elvis. We're so happy for you. You're just, you're sicker than a dog. You know, <laughs> you know I mean, they didn't say that to me, but I mean, that's, that's more or less what the, the so they were all clamoring, so they're happy as hell. And uh, that, you know, that was, I didn't realize it by being that sick, it was evidence that the, uh, the white blood cells were doing something, you know. Uh, or they, you know, they might have, you know, the clinical trial might be working, you know, because that's, uh, that's what they wanted. They wanted you to get really, really sick because that means your body or those white blood cells are fighting off those cancer cells, you know. And it turned out uh, how lucky. That's the reason why I'm still here, folks, it, uh, that clinical trial, because uh, I believe I, I'd, I'd have to look it all up. I just I didn't ever go back. But I think the success ratio with that particular treatment was very, very good. And uh they might have adopted that as standard practice now, uh, years later. I'd be curious to, to find out. I, I doubt Anita's still working at Carmanos, but uh, could always just give her a call and ask her about that. So that's, uh, that was the story at uh, Carmanos. So the, and this is a, we will finish on it down. I'm sorry, you guys. But uh, so, you know, after the, you get your stem cell transplant, they, they have to put you in the bubble, the bubble portion of the hospital. When I call it a bubble, you know, it's a it's an area it's back biologically, uh, or you know, I don't know what you call it, uh, but but it's maintained. Uh, they've got huge filters that, you know, there's no germs. That's a there's no germs, no bacteria, nothing is allowed on that floor because of these huge uh, systems that filter the air at all times to to keep it as clean as possible. And uh, and that's a, you know that's why uh, you know the stem cell transplants are expensive because you know, all that equipment costs a lot of money. But anyway, you know, that was the hard part because I'm up there with the hardcore cancer patients uh, that are on that floor with me. And, uh, you know, I, I, the saddest story uh, that I had was uh, I was, you know, because you got to exercise. So you get up and you got that stupid pole and you're, you're holding on to it, walking around the hallway, you know. Um, you know, and I, I walked a lot. I tried to because they want you to. They want you to exercise as much as you can. And uh, so I, they had a little coffee room, and I would just go in there sometimes. And I, I went in there, and I don't remember why I was in there. Maybe I was getting a, an orange juice or something. And uh, the, the man, you know, he says, uh, he says, are you a patient here? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a patient here, you know. And, uh, and he says, you know, he says, well, he says, and uh, we just got to talking. And uh, the story was that uh, it was his son that was up there, and he, he was a he was uh, studying to be a law lawyer and it was actually had just finished and was getting out to uh, what would have been an, an, a glorious career and uh, he got developed brain cancer and uh, they were there and uh, you know it was terminal and uh, so they were there doing the death march and he told me all about his son's life and what it was like and I guess he just wanted someone to talk to and 
you know, what am I going to do? Walk away? You know, oh no, you know, I don't want to hear about this, you know. So it made it very personal for me when, when, when his son died. And, you know, and, it, and you know it, you know, because what they do is they, they rope off that area so you can't walk through there, you know, rightfully so, and, and until they can get the body out off, from off the floor. And I, I, you know, I had to see that a, a few times. Hey, man, check this out. Oh, shoot, it was a turtle, but he went, <laughs> he went underground on me, man. All right, I was going to show him to you. We do have some really cool, there you see that big hole over there? That's where he just went. Huh. Yeah, so every now and then they'll, they'll build right along the trail here, you know, and if I ever get one while I have my camera, I will, I'll show you what they look like. And, you know, there, there's different varieties, of course, but, uh, so that was the, that was a sad story. And so you, you know, while you're there, and, and so, that, I mean, go with one more story. This is, this is kind of funny, but kind of sad too. So I'd been up there a month and uh, I was trying to eat the best I could. And uh, in hospitals, I tell you what, the food sucks. You know, they, and, it's, and it's full of, of just uh, high fructose corn syrup. I mean, I don't even, what are you serving a cancer uh, recovering uh, patient? The garbage food, you know? And so I would order uh, just, a, there was only a couple things on the menu that I could order that were, you know, good for me. And, uh, you know, and, and, but the thing was, they would bring all the garbage with it. And I kept, you know, because I hate, I'm, I'm a big time, you know, don't like to waste food if I can help it, you know, because people are starving in the world. And, uh, and so one day, you know, I, I just, I got out in the hallway and I just threw the food down the hallway, you know. And uh, there was this one nurse, she was, she was, she was so sweet. And, uh, and she, she says, well, you know, and then the doctor's like, you know, if you're going to act like that, Mr. Ellis, we're just going to send you home. I'm like, oh, and I said, I'll calm down, I'll calm down. I said, you know, but they, I said, they keep, I keep telling them not to bring it, and they bring it in here anyway, and then it gets thrown away, you know. So I'm just trying to, you know, because you, you've reached the end of your rope at some point, you know, and I've been up there a whole month. And so the doctor finally comes in, and it wasn't because of that. He just, they just decided, you know, it, that it just wasn't going to happen. And uh, he says, I'm sorry, Mr. Ellis, but uh, uh, you haven't grafted and this has been a been a pretty long duration. Usually, you graft within two or three weeks, and I've been four at that point. He says, "We're just gonna we're gonna just send you on home." You know, now I got no immune system. I got no immune system. That's a death sentence right there. And so I thought, you know, this is it. I'm done. I'm gonna die. You know. And I got home, and I remember just sitting in my chair that weekend. You know, no immune system, breathing the air in my house. You know, and and I'm thinking, well. Shoot, I really wanted to live a little longer, but uh, so be it. And uh, so I went in that following Monday, and they, you know, drew blood. And they said, Mr. Ellis, we've got great news for you. You've grafted. And, uh, man, I tell you what, you you know, if you want to just have an, a, one of those moments in your life where you just, you just want to sink down in that chair and just cry, you know, I mean, that was just an awesome, awesome moment. And uh, so that meant I was going to live, at least for a while longer. I didn't know if the stem cell transplant would work, and I'm still here. So it obviously worked somewhat. It worked its magic. All right, that should be long enough for <laughs> another video. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. I get so many doggone stories. It's just unbelievable. All righty, have a good one. Peace out, and uh, get some resilience.